this is Wobbly Wallaby. Today we're looking at mid-game stellar hunter farming. If you want to farm over 3.1 million raw zenny with no gotchas and budget gear, keep watching. We'll be farming at Harpies. Who should farm Harpies? Ideally, stellar hunters who are between level 120 and level 158. If you're above the 40 base level difference, it starts to get less profitable. You should also farm Harpies if you care about raw zenny. You'll get over 3.1 million raw zenny, but the materials are not sellable. This is also ideal if you don't have good Stellar Hunter gear. Maybe you're a couple months into the game, or you chose to use Stellar Hunter as an alt. Harpies are relatively easy to kill with Meteor Fission. Let's take a look at this character. I chose Stellar Hunter for my alt when choosing the accelerated ROM 2.0 character on my main account. My farming main is Stellar Hunter, so I had access to a lot of great gear and gachas. However, this isn't the case for most people, so in this video I'm trying to help these people out. For my alt, I did farming at Holy Ice Cave, but after a while, you accumulate too much ice dragon scales that you can't easily sell it anyways. So in the end, the raw zenny is the most important part, and both of them have very comparable raw zennies. The difference being Holy Ice Cave has very high requirements to one-shot everything there. Why is Stellar Hunter farming difficult? In particular, it's a Meteor Fission skill that you need to use to maximize your farming. The difficulty with Meteor Fission is the splash only does 55% damage, and 60% damage if you max out all your quicksand skills. As a result, you usually have to hit very hard to one-shot everything with the splash. For my Meteor Fission setup, I try to have as much attack as possible. Next is the skill Exceed Break. This is an incredible skill, but it does destroy your attack speed. With the budget setup, I try to have as much attack speed as possible. Let's take a look at my budget gear that I use for farming. For offhand, I use a plain Niles bracelet. For armor, I use tights with Archer Skeleton Star Card. On the Global Endless Love server, Archer Skeleton Star Cards are affordable, but if it is expensive on your server, just use cards that give you attack or dex. Or you can just eat a dex B meal instead. For garment, I use a Light Saint Cape. This can be bought through the Advanced NPC, which gives nice dex and agility. For shoes, I use the Advanced Sack Teddy Shoes, which provide excellent agility and critical damage. For my first accessory, I use the Brooch, which adds great agility, and I put the Greatest General card for final damage. For my second accessory, I use another Brooch for adding more agility. I put a Cold Blood card in here for adding the plus 10 critical. For the weapon, I use a plus 5 Bow of the Wind Chaser. This is a very budget-friendly bow. It provides a lot of raw damage and is much cheaper than the Malang Snow Crab. For killing harpies, you need to use two Mandragora Flower Cards. For head, I use a Limitless Niche, which adds auto attack damage percentage. In the past, auto attack damage percentage headgear was only in gachas, so this is a great free-to-play replacement. For card, I use the Mimi Monster Card, which adds five decks. For face, I use the Dragon Scale Stripe for an extra 10 decks. For mouth, I use the Abyss Whisper for attack percentage. For back, I use the Devil Wings, which add great damage percentage and an extra plus one attributes. You have to do a quest to unlock this. For tail, I use the Sea Soul's Tail, which adds to all attributes and adds extra earth damage that we need towards Harpies. Now let's talk about some ideal gear. There's no point in suffering with suboptimal gear if you have access to these. This list does include events and getcha items. For offhand, if you have a higher refine and leveled Niles or a Helion bracelet, definitely use that instead. However, Helion is really expensive. For armor, use Tyre's armor. It is expensive, but is very powerful for farming. It adds fantastic attack speed and critical damage. For garment, use a Cloud Undershirt, which adds a lot of damage but is fairly expensive. You can also use a max level undershirt too, or a blue evil capel for attack speed. For shoes, use the advanced teddy that's still considered the best in my opinion. For accessories, if you have access to dog servant or fading tear, those are very good. Also, if you have the ultraman card, that's also very helpful versus harpies. The ultraman card is an event specific item, so not everyone has access to this. For weapon, the Overlord Crab Bow is the best, but it is very expensive. For headgear, any auto attack gadgets are good if you have them. 
Also, using the Andre Star card or the Mashin Hero card are more ideal. For face, the Dragon Scale Stripe is still fine. But if you have gadgets that add to auto attack damage or penetration percentage, then those are great replacements. For mouth, Key of the Stars is the best mouth. Once the new advanced Kafka comes out, you won't have access to this anymore, so I'm trying to feature-proof this video by using Abyss Whispers, which we will always have access to. For back, One-Eyed Captain is the best, since you won't run out of SP. Sakura Puppet is also good, and you can get this by completing a quest. But since the damage scales by level, I chose not to use this in this video since my character is level 150. For tail, any damage increasing or auto-attacking tail is good. Fluffy is the ideal one for auto attack damage increase. Next, let's look at attributes. With budget gear and exceed break, the goal is to have 100 critical, get as high attack as possible, and get as high attack speed as possible with exceed break. I want to invest in as little luck as possible, so I get the 100 critical by using the Mandragora pet, with the max critical rate up, and I also use the Cobalt card for plus 10 critical. With self buff, I'm able to achieve 104 critical. However, if you're not able to hit 100 critical, do remove points from agility and dex to make up for it. Next is skills. Here are my archer skills. Here are my hunter skills. Here are my sniper skills. Here are my ranger skills. Here are my Stellar Hunter skills. Make sure to max Meteor Fission and Unlimited Stars. For my auto attack, my skills are auto attack, prepare for elite with true sight, wind walk, exceed break, meteor fission, and unlimited stars. I also have play dead for SP regen. For advanced ruins, the precision sniper is good for farming. The rest are just added to activate the attribute ruins. Choose any that you have available to help activate them. For attribute ruins, dex, agility, destruction attack, penetration attack, and berserk attack are all great to level up. Here are my ruin effects as a summary. For this character, I barely touched guild blessings, prayers, or contribution. I just added penetration once, and the rest are all defaults you get from completing your growth index. The Acer is the default given to me as well. The most important is Elemental Arrow 1 to 3. The rest can be added to damage increasing nodes. The defaults don't invest in Exceed Break. If you have spare points or you chose to reset your Acer, that is something that's nice to invest in, but it is quite expensive. Here is my Adventure Handbook. If you have been playing a while, these are very achievable. If you haven't been, you can definitely try making up for this with Guild Blessings, Prayers, and Contributions. That adds a lot of damage to your character. For food buffs, I'm going to try and be budget friendly too. I'm going to use 6 Satisfied Feasts, which add a lot of penetration percentage. I'm going to eat Agility A meals. I'm going to eat Awakening Potions. And I'm going to eat Earth Converters to deal extra damage to Harpies. Here are my character stats. For attack, I have 8095. For attack speed, I'm normally at 480%, but with Exceed Break, it is at 446.1%. I have 35.5% penetration. For critical, I have 104. For critical damage, I have 160.3%. For auto attack damage increase, I have 4%. For damage percent increase, I have 58. For earth damage, I have 4%, and against wind monsters, I have 47%. Let's begin farming. Here's my favorite harpy spot in Border Checkpoint. Here's my inventory so you can see my starting Zenny. I also have no harpy feathers. I am using premium and offline battle for this data collection. My combat time is at 240 minutes. I listened to 30 minutes of music and got an extra 60 minutes from my mentor potions. Let's begin. We'll watch my character Meteor Fission Harpies for a bit. Sometimes the one-shot doesn't work due to the distance, but for the most part, it is consistent enough that you will be killing a ton of Harpies. My connection is not very good, so you'll see that I'm doing a lot of double hits on Harpies. This is a really good reason why offline farming is very helpful. I'm going to go to offline farming now. 
I stopped the character after 333 minutes. I was gonna stop it at 330 minutes, which is when red stamina happens, but I was 3 minutes too late. Let's take a look at our bag to see our ending Zenny, and also some of the drops we got. The five crystals are from killing random geographers that also are in this area. These drops don't sell very well, so I focus more on the raw Zenny. I got over 3.1 million raw Zenny. I'm at a 40 level difference, so my drop rate is reduced to 90%. This is a fantastic spot for raw Zenny. If you're within the 30 level difference, you'll actually be able to make anywhere between 3.2 to 3.4 million raw Zenny per day. In future videos, I'll look at other common spots that I'll attempt to farm with as budget-friendly gear as possible. I hope you enjoyed this budget-friendly farming video. If you liked this video, like, comment, and subscribe.